Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is James Steiner and welcome back to Hate Plus. I think there's only a couple more unread documents that I have here. I think I will read two of them. Then after that, I think I'll call it an episode because quite honestly, I don't want to dwell too long. So let's just get right into it. I hate the morning after. May Genet. Dear Diary. Aw, cute. Stop spoiling it, lady. Oh, I am so, so in love. I just got home, and after I finish eating, I need to get to work. But right now, I gotta write this down because, ah, girl feelings. That is kind of adorable. Yesterday on our date together, A actually held my hand in public. I thought she was worried about being seen with me like that before, but I guess she changed her mind. And that was even before dinner. I mean, afterwards, I wouldn't have been surprised because she insisted on us going through a lot of wine together. And she gets really possessive of me when she does that. Please, my dear, I insist, she told me as she ordered the second bottle. Money might be tight these days, but it's worth it to see you get all giggly and affectionate. What? I don't even know what you're talking about, I said, but then I couldn't help but giggle. Oh, fine. Is that what wine makes you do? I've never really had any. <sighs> Wine makes you do a lot of weird stuff. In fact, any form of alcohol does. Drink responsibly, kids. I mean it truly, especially with how little I seem to see you lately, she said sadly. Well, we'll be able to spend more nights together once we're able to get a place of our own, right? I asked. I really can't wait until we can. If I could take her back to my home, it would be fine, but ha ha, oh no, no way am I sleeping with her with my parents on the other side of the screen. Good point. Getting a place of our own on the same deck is still the only option. I can't wait. Right, she said. Why wouldn't she? Is A young and noisy sleeper? Oh, you don't know the half of it. Right, she said, and then took another drink. Afterwards, we went back to her cozy apartment behind the theater and we drank some more. It pretty quickly got to the point in the evening where she could just not keep her hands off me, which, oh my gosh, I still, I just still cannot deal with it at all. At all. Oh my. Here we go. Y you know, I stammered, if you keep being like that with me in public, all those fangirls who call you Big Sister are going to get jealous. My, are they now, she said in that super husky voice of hers that just totally makes me melt. Then she started to stroke my hair. I wish, sadly, there's not many of them anymore. Single girls just don't go to the theater these days, it seems. Good, I said. I want you all to myself. I do miss all the love letters, though. My, they would say the most flattering things she teased me. Then she walked over to the futon and slipped out of her dress like it was the most natural thing ever. And oh my gosh, just every time I see her naked, I am just so blown away. This is really, really, really awkward? Is that the word you're looking for? That gorgeous black hair resting on her soft, totally smooth, perfect curves and those long legs and long fingers and perfect chest. Jeez, I have to stop. I can't do her justice at all with my babbling. But, ah, she could do anything to me after seeing that, and she knows it. Well, I could call you that too, and, um, I know way more about what makes you beautiful than all those girls did anyway. Do you? She said, staring at me and giving me that look. Good thing I was way drunk past the point of anything but blushing all the time because that really, really would have done it otherwise and then she'd just tease me for that too. Come here, she told me, gesturing. I had no choice but to do what she said. She undressed me quickly. It's her way of showing that she's in control and I still get pretty nervous. I mean, really, I'm just terrified. What if she realizes just how much out of my depth I am compared to her. It's not as bad as it used to be, especially that first time she saw my boobs, but oh my gosh, I just feel so aware of how gross and sweaty my body is and how it's got little hairs where she's perfectly smooth and how my boobs are tiny compared to hers and just, I don't know what she sees in me. I love her and I know she loves me back, but I just don't get it sometimes. Is that normal for a girl's body? 
you should know better than me. But then she pulled me onto her lap and we kissed and then we both giggled at how we tasted like the peach drinks we just finished off. Every time we do this, I just suddenly really, really want to play with her boobs because, oh my gosh, they are the softest. Then she gives me a look and I stop, but, well, after a while, this time, I just couldn't get over how perfect her body is. This isn't just love-struck rambling. It's really, really is perfect. Oh, jeez, oh, jeez, oh, jeez. I ended up kissing her neck, and even that was just so soft. I don't really know what came over me, but I kind of really felt like biting her. I don't know, I feel bad now, but I just felt like I really wanted to leave a blemish on that super perfect body of hers. And I guess, um, to show that she was taken. That got really weird really quickly. I don't know, it's stupid and sounds awful when I say it now, but I started out gentle and she let me, so I kept going and didn't even stop when she cried out. I didn't even think to stop. All I could think of when I heard that moan of hers was that, gosh, I wanted her to hear more. This is really... Finish your sentences. When I pulled my head back to look at her, it was just, gosh, it really did stick out so much. Her complexion perfect and skin totally smooth in every other way, except for that big red blemish, and knowing that it was mine. I felt like I really wanted to do it again, but then she grabbed me strongly and kept kissing me. Then she pinned me down and went at it more. I wanted to apologize, but she wouldn't even let me say anything. I am really glad we have a relationship like this, because if I couldn't kiss her, I don't know if I could ever really tell her how I felt. Ah, this is... that sounds like I'd... Gosh. Stop spoiling it! Then she went down on me, and I just completely, totally melted under her. I really wish I'd done the same for her, even though she's pretty much a natural at making me cry out and I never know what I'm doing, but we pretty much both passed out right there before I could. When we woke up, we were both just all tangled up together naked on top of her sheets, and she slept with her head on my waist. I really, really didn't want to leave. I hate the mornings after. This is so indecent, but also maybe a little romantic. I don't think romantics is the right word I think you're looking for. Erotic. Why do our amazing evenings have to end? Gosh, I'm just so in love with her. I wish it was possible to just spend an entire day with her and not worry about having to work and scramble home in the morning and ah, why don't we already live together? It's not fair. And there's a second letter here, so you got nothing to say. Thank you. I hate the mornings after part two. Okay, so it's literally back to back. Oh, that's bad. There you go, spoiling it again. How long is this one? This one's also pretty wrong. What do you mean by that? I shouldn't have scrolled down. With every passing day comes increasing worries about the next will bring. My only reprise from my fears comes during my rare dates with my cute flower, Jenna. Oh, okay, so that. Oh, so they're literally the same letter. But they're put together. So you've got the one from Jina and the other one from Hyoe Young. Good to know. But more and more, I truly hate these mornings after, for she has to return to the world of commoners and family, and I will return to mine to discover that attendance at the Silver Eternity has dropped again. And such and such, patron has threatened to rescind their donation. Beside me, I watch the naked form of my love selfishly sleeping as I write, and I have both overwhelming desire to join her and trepidation towards the inevitable awakening the next morning. I long for nothing more than to be able to rest my head on her forever and never have to leave. Yet I cannot, and I know that things are troubled. Before she arrived at the theater to pick me up, I was in conversation with a patron who offered, as many others have, to alleviate all my financial worries at the price of offering him something of mine that my beloved wants all to herself. Oh, okay, he wants, he, he wants a bit of that. That is so messed up. I let him show the typical amount of inappropriate affection, his hand on my cheek as he made his extraordinary demand. And when I declined, it was not out of a sense of dignity, but out of love for Jenna. Still, she walked in that sight, and while she said nothing, I am certain that it worried her. Oh. I tried to make it up to her with displays of over-affection, as I cannot bear the thought of worrying her cute little head. I held her hand as we walked to the restaurant and even let her order a second bottle of wine. Aw, that's sweet at least. 
Every time I am with her, my mind enters an endless spiral of worries that the moment is wrong or that I am not delivering enough. I don't know if that will ever go away. Perhaps that's simply how love is. Despite my age and my... pretenses... I don't know why I had trouble with that word. I have little genuine experience in such matters. When we return to my dingy room... My dingy, not dingy... Wrong fucking word. When we returned to my dingy room behind the theater, we ended up drinking more still, and it's in that state I find myself to be so emotionally vulnerable. These days, there seems to be no single girl in attendance at the theater, only families and grandmothers and old men, I lamented. Gone are the days of rich girls lining up to deliver love letters to me. Do I miss them so? You'll have to settle for me, she said with her usual indifferent enthusiasm. I don't know how she keeps it up. I envy it. It's what gives me the energy to keep going, remembering that innocent smile of hers. I wanted her so much. I wanted to embrace her and to be overwhelmed with the immediate passion for her such that I could forget my lamentations and melancholy and simply live in the moment where I am naked before her excited smile. Wow, saying these things, that sounds... that sounds... Finish your sentence, please! I get it, it's uncomfortable, your cultural differences and all that stuff, but still... Finish your damn sentences! I know more about what makes you beautiful than all those girls did anyway, she told me, appraisingly, as I undressed and waited for her in bed. Do you? I wondered wistfully. She did, of course. She knew my vulnerability. She knew my weakness. Oh jeez, I shouldn't be reading this. With all those girls, even when I took them off to my bed, it was always so easy to me. I always knew that I was prettier and more desirable and more confident, and that not even for a second would I ever lose control of the situation. I would make them squirm and gasp and shudder for my amusement at my will, never fearing that I was ever giving any less than exactly what they wanted from me. With her, though, it's special. I feel as though I have to try so hard to please her, as though she is the one who is perfect and in control, and I never have the confidence that I can meet her expectations. But I try so hard. Come here, I begged her, reaching out in longing. For some reason, the thought that she might not came to mind and scared me. But she did. I undressed her when she let me, letting her show that she was in control even in that facet. Oh, that is weird. They both think the other is in control. We kissed, and then she started to giggle. I could scarcely help myself from doing the same, despite my worries and melancholy. Then she took my body under her lap and my chest into her strong, calloused hands, gripped me tightly. Only enough for a tease, though only enough to make me stare at her longingly for the feeling of her rough fingers playing with me. My breasts themselves were only in her grip for seconds, but my heart still now remains ever firmly in her grasp. Then she started to bite my neck. At first, gently, to give me a chance to decline, as if I could say no to her, but then stronger, until I couldn't help but moan in pain and delight. This is a little... This is a little... I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna finish that thought. No, I'm not gonna finish it. When she was done, I touched my neck. It was so sensitive, so tender compared to the skin around it, and I felt so happy that she had found a way to leave me with something. An outward show of her love that wouldn't disappear when she left for work. This is... Weird? Weird. Sad? What are you going for? I had to thank her. I had to kiss her, showing my gratitude in the most eloquent way I know how. As I pinned her down, giving her attention where she most deserved it, I felt like, for that moment, all our barriers to communicate had been lifted, that I knew what I was doing was good enough for her and what she wanted from me, and that I had nothing else in the world more to worry about save for trying to draw more pleased noises out of her. This is downright pornographic. She got louder and louder as I dedicated myself to her, letting out the most perfect wavering murmurs, gripping tightly to the sheets. I wish I could have heard that 
last ecstatic moan again and again. It was what I was longing for, her most explicit display of love and approval. And then she fell asleep, and I was brought back to the real world, the one where I can only rarely see my love, where the holder of that innocent smile speaks of naive dreams of living together that with each day we can afford increasingly less. And so I write down my feelings in the hopes that I can hold on to them when she leaves and perhaps find strength and comfort in them. I feel really sad for her though. Uh, yeah, her idea of love is a little off. You still have nothing to say though. And now I will go to sleep at her side as long as I am able. And naked before her, adorned only by her mark on my neck, I'll declare I love her as much as I hate the morning after. Sorry, I really want to talk to you though. Let's do it. Let's talk to her first. And then I have a feeling I know what we're going to talk about. Sorry, I know this is embarrassing, but it's still weighing really heavily on my mind. All these people, married or not, talking so much about sex, and they talk about expressing their love in so many different ways. As for me, though, um, well, you already know, but I was only ever with my husband. This is embarrassing to admit, but I remember I um, actually really enjoyed that at the time. But now, when I think about it, I can't really remember why. Maybe it's something you need to have a body to understand. I just don't remember what it feels like at all. But still, um, I hope this isn't sudden, but can I ask you something? What do you think relationships are all about? Here's the thing. I am of the utmost opinion that a relationship is very much about love, so I'm going to say that. I don't know why you would say, well, I can see someone that's a little bit more old-fashioned saying carrying on your family, and then other people who are very flippant about relationships saying, oh, it's just about having fun at that point, you know, sex, no sex, just enjoy yourself. I'm a little bit more of a romantic, I'll admit that, so I'll just say that one. Ah, uh, that's, yeah, I knew it. That is so romantic of you. I think love is really important too. Reading about all these people, relationships from the past, somehow, I get the feeling that they all believed in love. Or maybe at least they were all about being there for each other. And I guess um, being together in that way was just a part of that. If it was with someone I loved, I think I'd really like that even more. The idea of it being such a passionate, active thing for both people is so different from what I experienced. I wonder, what's that like? Well. Seung Bok really makes it sound like a good thing. Reading about all this might be a little embarrassing and so foreign to me, but it makes me feel like I can believe in romance again. That it's not just some childish thing, and it makes me want to experience, well, you know, something that intense. Um, anyway, I'm sorry, I'm babbling about such an embarrassing thing. Let's get back to reading. Um, not that I mean I just want to read things that are dirty. Just investigating. I want to get back to reading so we can continue investigating. Uh, jeez, let's just get back to it. You managed to make that really uncomfortable. What's in the inbox? Layover on Earth? Okay, let's read it. A 24 hour layover on Earth can be brutal for most travelers, but it doesn't have to be with most spaceports linked by orbital rail to transit. Taking a day trip on the surface has never been easier. Remember, days on Earth are traditionally segmented into seven per week, with most regions observing one or two of those days off. Make sure you're not trying to visit during a weekend day, or you might be terribly disappointed. Here's some of our favorite lesser frequented days trips that anyone can experience on Earth. The Pyongyang Gardens, open to the public all days, but tours unavailable on Monday or Tuesday. Like most major metro metropolitan areas in the region, Pyongyang is climatized to a year-long comfortable spring, so while the countryside will be buried in snow in February, the city itself is nice and warm, perfect for watching the flowers bloom on its famous rooftop gardens. Lake City Ruins closed to the public on Sundays. Okay. <clears throat> Experience a guided tour through the preserved ruins of Lake City to see a glimpse of quaint 23rd century life. Oh, right, this is the... God, that would be the 50th century. It's almost the 51st century. That is a long time. 
Tour routes are well marked, well monitored, and completely safe for any visitor. For those not interested in long hikes, a trip on the recently restored electric underground rail system is still a must-see. The Atlantis Science Museum closed on Sunday mornings. All of the Science Museum's exhibits are worth visiting, but the current special holography exhibits on both dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals and the Lunar War are absolutely outstanding and must be seen. Plus, a three-hour trip counts as your annual educational requirement just going to show that learning can be fun. Um... Okay, I'm f I have a feeling that my character is trying to set up a little something for her to experience when they finally get there. If they get there. Anyway, that is my time. Oh, jeez. That one was a long one. I don't know. I'm not going to edit out any of the stuff that I read. I'm just going to be really honest on that one because... Technically speaking, it is an art form in and of itself. So, I will show it to its fullest extent. Let's just see how that turns out. I wonder if all the relationships are going to be that explicit. Because that's something that I am having a little bit of trouble not really comprehending just suspending my disbelief if you will but then again these are all technically private drivers but the qu real question is why does she have those in her memory bank that's something that is very weird and i hope we find out really really soon anyway thank you all so much for watching be sure to click that like button share fair and subscribe and i will see you in the next video goodbye